All right, here we go. All right, welcome to our team athlete briefing uh, for the Continental Cup Finals. First of all, congratulations for qualifying. Um, you guys all did really, really great. It was fun to watch. Um, and we're excited about the final. Um, a couple things just to mention, I guess, going into the final first is timing. So final is this coming Saturday and you're going to compete at 1 p.m. your local time. So we're trying to make it as fair since we've got people from every single time zone uh, competing in the final. We didn't want to pick just a time and have everyone do it then because I have people where it's 3 a.m. for them and then it's 8 p.m. for somebody else. So we're just saying 1 p.m. your local time uh, and everyone will kind of have the same advantage. It'll be as fair as possible. Um, and I said this earlier in the individual athlete briefing, but some of you guys had teams qualify and then also individuals and you're doing the competition from the same physical location. So you have everyone together. Uh, if that presents an issue with just timing and space requirements and COVID restrictions and all of that, uh, let it, just let us know, shoot me an email um and we'll come up with a plan so you guys can kind of space out the timing um because we want everyone to still be able to participate so we're going to be flexible on that uh so just let me know i know there are a couple countries that maybe have that issue where you um had a lot of people qualify and you're doing everything kind of together so just let me know we'll accommodate uh issues that you have around the timing but 1 p.m your local time same kind of deal in terms of score submission and video submission. Um, Andrew said you guys did, for the most part, really, really great on uh, getting your scores in on time. He said there were no issues with that. So same deal, uh, email those scores 15 minutes after you're done with your competition and then two hours to get the videos in. Um, Anders is gonna be sending out an athlete info packet either tonight or tomorrow, and it's gonna be kind of the same packet that you got the first time around, but it'll have that information again. Um, and it'll have a setup, you know, the same little diagrams and graphics for setups. Um, but not much is changing on that front. Um, things that you need to know or things you guys didn't do well the first time around, we got some videos that were in portrait mode, right? So this is portrait mode and we need you guys filming landscape. Okay, otherwise you end up having a really, really tiny um, video on the screen. So make sure um, you film that in landscape. If you haven't seen the tests yet, those are up on our website. So make sure you take a look at those and we can post the link in that um, link in the chat in a second as well as too. Uh, yes, for the scores as well, Anders does not want you guys sending scorecards. He had some people who are taking pictures of scorecards and emailing them for the scores. So we just want the score, right? An email with like six lines of text that have, this is the score written out. Don't send us pictures of the scorecards. It's too hard for us to read. Um, other things, I think, uh, not really too much. Just make sure when you're filming, keep people out of the way. There were a couple of times we had people you know, going and they were fighting for a spot in the final and then suddenly like a, a passerby, a spectator or a photographer, somebody walked by or stood in front of the camera and we, we missed action. So make sure everybody's out of the way of your camera when you're filming. Um, as you saw, we could only show top nine um, when we were doing the live stream. Um, more of an issue with individuals than with the teams, but we're gonna try to show everybody. I think we've got 10 teams in the final. So we're gonna try to make sure that we uh, can see everybody. Um, what other things did he say that I'm forgetting? Oh, judging. Um, for the most part, you guys did good, but please remember, I know there were some things where we watched and we kind of had to reach out to people. Veronique sent some, um, had sent some emails to say, hey, we can see blatant no reps here. We can see some issues. Um, so please, Tell your TOs, really let them know they need to be, they're not just there to count reps, they're actually there to judge uh, and no rep when the standards are met and they have to be upholding the standards. So we don't wanna have to reach out to people and say, hey, you didn't do this right. Um, so make sure you guys, if you're team managers, that you uh, re reiterate that to your TOs. Um, and then the other thing, 
was make sure you're not going till the actual go signal. So Anders saw a lot of videos when he was, you know, editing where as the three, two, one go is happening, you're bending down already to get your bar. You're already trying to grab the rower handle. So remember, you don't move until go. Okay. Uh, so one, it makes a problem for our editing and two, it's just, it's a cheating, right? Don't start before go. Um, so those are kind of, I guess, the big reminders. Um, oh, the other thing I didn't talk about. So we have a lot of rowing in this final. Um, and first of all, just to be clear, like why we're not seeing the bike and the skier and, and other things besides the rower, uh, because this is virtual and because we have countries around the world, we had concerns about everybody being able to get the same brand of an assault bike. Uh, or a bike, of a bike at all. And then we had, we talked to our federations and there were some that weren't able to get ski ergs. So that's why you're only seeing the rower and not the other machines. Um, for this particular event, it's just the virtual nature of it. We wanted to make sure everybody could participate. Um, but that being said, because there is so much rowing, we want to make it a little bit more interesting for you guys. So Anders will send out more information about this specifically in the info packet, but we want to try to use the WeTime app because that can connect directly to your rower. And then we can show on the screens how you're doing on your row compared to the other team. But in order to do that, you need the WeTime app. You'll have to download that. And then you will also have to have a PM5 uh, monitor on your rower. So, and we want everyone to try to find a rower that has a PM5 monitor. If you don't have one, uh, you need to email Anders because there's a workaround for it, but we don't want you to have to do the workaround if you don't have to. So do everything you can to find a rower with a PM5 monitor. Um, and then you'll download the WeTime app. We have like a code that I think that's going to be in the info packet. So it's not going to cost you anything to download and use the app. Um, but Anders will send all that info out. But what we're going to try to do is be able to see what's happening on your rower uh, as it's happening. So it's going to make it a more interesting uh, video for everybody. Okay. Um, that is it, I think, in terms of kind of the technical side of things. So I'll turn it over to Veronique and she'll go over the actual test with you. I'm going to, in the meantime, find the link for that and put that in the chat. So if you haven't seen the tests, I imagine you guys all went and looked, but if you haven't seen them, you can go click on them and read them. Yes, all just right. one thing on um, technical stuff that Andrew said earlier to the um, uh, individuals. Uh, if you have a workout like for time and you finish like two or three minutes ahead, the, um, the time cap, just don't cut your video right away. Mm -hmm. It is easier for him and for the, um, for the broadcasting and all the setuping of all those videos together. It's better to view all videos like you don't have one that got 30 seconds. And so just, if you have a 10 minute workout, make sure you um, video 10 minutes. And that was, that will you um, to send to, uh, to Anders. Yeah, yes, that was a good point. Yeah, let it run all the way through the time cap and then like 20, 30 seconds after, that'll be helpful to him. Yep, great. So standards guys, have you seen the workouts? Oh, wait, let me let you share your screen. Um, well, I guess you can, yeah, you should be able to share now, Veronique. Yep, I am. Great. Let me go there. And put on slides. Great. So the format of the briefing is the same as last week. So quick view of the whole event of the flow of the work of the whole workouts. And then workouts by workouts, we're gonna get, um, look at the flow and the standards. I'm gonna ask many time, anybody have questions? So just to make sure we are not only asking questions for all the workouts all mixed, just gonna go part by part, gonna be easier to understand and quicker also. And um, those links are the same as last week also for the movement standards and competition rule book make sure you read them before if you haven't done yet it's on the website uh, also under event i think so flow of workouts for do i've missed one uh no so flow of workouts 
Uh, endurance, it's a 17 minute workout or time cap, we don't know yet. 30 minutes rest, and then your uh, strength events at 10 minutes with another 10 minutes rest. Uh, body weight starting at 15, so it's a 20 minute. Mixed relay one, mixed relay two, and the power is another 10 minutes. So just quick uh, global view of your whole event. So it's a two hours um, slot time you need. Before starting the well, workouts, um, workouts have some strategy inside. So um, prior to starting the event, you must select the guy that will be the male one and who is, will be male two, and then the same for the women. So we'll have male one, male two, female one, and female two. And that order must remain the same for the whole workout. You have three workouts, test one, three, and six that need um, a specific rotation or movement inside, and they must remain the same for the whole event. So just make sure you select all of those and respect the order there. So test one, it's a 4,000 meter row relay. So each athlete must perform 1,000 meter row. So the order for that is male one, male two, female one, and female two. And athletes will switch after at each 1,000 meters. The time cap is 17 minutes. So athletes must use a concept two rower machine. Uh, the, row, the rower must be set um, for a countdown from 4,000 to zero. And athlete will switch when the TO said that they reached the right amount of distance. And for that, you will need one technical official. That's pretty straightforward. Male one, row 1,000, 1,000 is reached, like 4,000 to 3,000, male two, 3,000 to two, male, uh, female one, 2,000 to 1,000, and then 1,000 to zero. Um, any question about the flow of that? That's pretty straightforward. I don't see any questions. I think you could, you're good. For standards, concept to roar, it must be seated. Seated is butt on the seat before starting to row, as Gretchen start, uh, said also earlier. So don't grab the handle before the beep. You should be standing, standing tall, uh, well, sitting on the, you can sit on the rower, but three, two, one, go, and then grab the handle, please. So it's the same. So the rower must be set to come from, actually it's not 5,000, it's 4,000 meters. Must be a mistype there. Um, we know that some, like near the switch of athletes, probably it could be, could look like at the, the first the first switch between the two guys, you must see probably like 298, two, uh, 2,998 or 2,985 or something like that. That's fine as long as the athlete has, don't get some distance for his partner. So make sure the switch is around the 1,000 distance-ish, please. We trust you on this guys. Question. Um, the question says, can we row standing? Standing? Yeah. Oh, we can't row standing. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> seated on, <laughs> seated. Seated rowing, yep. Um, and like Ronnie said, we realize there's gonna be a little bit of rollover, right? Uh, as you're transitioning, it's every person's not gonna be 100% exact 1,000, but don't go, you know, be honest at a thought when it's your time to switch, switch. Don't try to get extras and stay on extra, okay? Um, I don't see any more questions. I think you're good. That one's fairly straightforward. Guess two, strength. Uh, performed by all four athletes is a 30 overhead squat for time with a time cap at 10 minutes. So this workout will be performed in pairs. So male pair athletes and female pair athletes. And each pair must perform 15 of the total three reps. 
So the female pair will do 15 reps and the male pair will do 15 reps also. One TO is needed for that. That is good. So teams may select who is beginning the workout. Is it male pair or female pair? This is your choice. The pair can split the repetition as they want. Um, there is no minimum requirement, so it could be only one female that do the 15 overhead squats, or they can switch at each two, whatever they want. The bar must be taken from the ground for this test at the beginning. Um, two barbell can be used, also one for female and one for male. They are two uh, different weights. And um, yep, that's pretty much it for the transition. You can choose if you want to trend to do the transition in hair. So the female can keep the barbell and give it to a partner or you can drop it on the ground and then the partner take it back is as you want. There is no regulation on that. Any question about the flow of the strength event? Nope, I think you're good. Great. Overhead squats. So like every squat, you must read the bottom of the squat. So it crease below top of the knee. And um, you have to hold your barbell in overhead position uh, while descending the bottom of the squat and then coming back to full extension. Arms may bend during the squatting as long as the barbell doesn't touch shoulders, head, or any other body of the, any portion, sorry, any parts of the body. And um, what we need to see is an upright position, the arms spreading the weight must be locked out. So what does this mean? So you can, oops, let me start here. You can start, do your old squat and, and you can bend here and then come back and at the top, you must reach full extension of your elbows, shoulders and hips and knees. So it's the same vertical alignment that you can see on the profile view. So you can bet at the, 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 the descent, as long as the barbell don't touch your head and then press out at the top to reach the full lockout of the elbow. Any question about standards of overhead squats? Um, we have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first one, when they, this is, I guess, more flow, but when athletes change, so between like, let's say the two female partners, does the bar have to be on the floor? And you kind of answered this already and that's no. Oh. There's no requirement on the transitions. Is your your ability, if you want to switch in back rack and front rack in deadlift hold, is your choice. If you want to drop it on the ground because it's heavy, drop it and then your partner will take it. Yeah, the only thing you can't do, I would say is you can't put it in a rack, right? So if the, if the athletes want to change themselves, right? The, they pass it to each other or whatever, that's fine. You can't put the bar in a rack and have the other athlete take it out of a rack. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Say so no squat rack in this. It's. Um, we have a question here. It says, can, can they lift at the same time? And I think that's asking like the male and the female pair at the same time. No, it's a relay. So the first pair will perform 15 over its squats. When the 15 are done, the other pair is jumping in and do their 15 over its squats. Um, first, or can you squat snatch your first rep? Yes, it is. You can. Yep. Um, do both athletes have to lift or can one do all the reps? Uh, there's no minimum requirement, no minimum work requirement. So an athlete can do all 15 or you can split as you want. It's your strategy there. So one person could do all the reps if you want. Yep. And that is all the questions I see. Great. So test three, skills. So perform by all four athletes. Remember your order, male one, male two, female one, female two. That is in this workout also. So it's for time 30 strict uh, ring muscle up, like last weekend, last Friday, actually. Um, 50 strict deficit and stand push up at three inches and 70 
strict pull-ups. So athletes must stay in the same order as test one. So male one, male two, female one, female two. And each athlete is allowed to do an unbroken set of repetition for this one. You have a 20 minutes time cap and the score is total time to complete. You have a 10 minute rest after that. What, uh, what the um, unbroken set means if the athletes, the male one go on the ring and perform eight, you cannot, you cannot drop and then go back for another three or four reps. So as long when you drop, you drop is male two is jumping on the rings in that same way for the 30 reps. Any question about the flow? I don't see anything yet, so I think you could move on. Uh, yes, one question, please. Uh, uh, if uh, the first athlete perform eight reps, can the second athlete perform another scheme of reps or uh, they should stick to the first scheme of reps? Uh, no, actually, if the first athlete, the first, uh, the first male jump on the ring, do eight reps and then drop because it's tired, he can go. And then if the other athlete is the kind of weakness for him and he can only do two, he does the max rep he can. And you don't have to stick for a rep scheme. It's okay. you're adding up the 30 reps all together. Okay, if, if an, another question, please. If an athlete goes to the ring and fails to do any, any rep, is it okay to switch to the next athlete? Well, actually the athlete must try at least to have one rep. We don't, we don't want a, only an athlete like taking a spot. Only jump on the rings, try. If it goes great, if you if you miss it, like too bad as if you have tried. But the athlete that cannot do one of the three um, movement have at least to try one rep before switching. Okay, so so you you mean that the athlete at least need to do one rep before switching? It, it doesn't have to be a successful rep. They can. Yeah, but but a trial, you mean. Try. Yeah, you have to make an, an, an effort, right? Whether it's yes. you, know, you pull up and you didn't go all the way up there, you know, or you put your hands in and put it back up, you have to at least try. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, so we have a, a like question here, I guess. <laughs> um, a Claire, another couple questions. So the question is written as just max unbroken reps, but I think that's maybe misleading in the way. So unbroken meaning you can't get off the the equipment, right? Yep. Max, I guess max is kind of a, a weird word here, but there's no other way to describe it because in my opinion, it's a bad strategy if you're going to get up there and do your true max number of reps on your first turn, right? Especially if you're thinking you're going to have to do multiple turns. So max is really your choice of how many reps you want to do unbroken, right? If you can do 10 unbroken strict ring muscle-ups in a row, but then you know that you, the rest of your team is not going to be able to get the other 20 before it's your turn again, maybe you don't want to do 10 in a row on your first turn, right? Maybe you choose to do five because you know there's a lot of other strict stuff coming up. So max is kind of just the word we use to, to show like you have an unbroken set. But I mean, if you want to do your true max, go for it. I just don't think it's a good strategy. So it's just a set without coming off the, however many you want to do without getting off the equipment. And then the next person, however many they want to do without getting off next person, however many they want to do, but it's just, you can't get off and you can't do multiple sets in a row before switching people. Does that make sense? Sorry, Veronique, I didn't mean to like <laughs> take your thing. Um, but I think it's a confusing word, right? So I just yeah. wanted to make sure it was clear. Um, okay, let's back to the actual questions. <laughs> the question is, if one athlete fails a rep, they change. And I guess, well, in theory, it depends if they come off the equipment or not, mm -hmm. right? If you yep. fail a muscle up and you decide you want to try again, you haven't come off the rings yet, you could. Uh, chances yeah. are you're not going to get it if you just failed one, but... So most likely, yes, but as long as you didn't come off the equipment, you can keep trying. I don't know why you would though, <laughs> right? Um, okay, sorry, I think those are all the questions. Yeah, so, the unbroken thing is 
as long as when you um, drop from the equipment, then your set is done. So if you want to rest or relax in full extension, you can do that. But when you when your hands leave the equipment, you're done. And then it's the turn of your partner to, to continue the, the reps. So for strict muscle-ups are the same as last week. Um, I have looked at them and I've seen kind of moment, uh, momentum created. I know you are a strong athlete and you can like string them, string them a lot and quickly, but make sure we don't see a momentum created. And so when you get on all your muscle ups and you go down like quickly, if your feet is breaking the vertical plane like a toaster bar, you have to bring them straight and then attempt another strict muscle up. I've seen like many athletes rocking those strict muscle ups, but it was like kind of waving, it creates momentum and it helps the athletes um, moving up. So make sure they are strict. I was reading. I was reading. Um, um, I think there's another micro. Okay. That's for strict muscle up, strict deficit and stand push up. I must reach a full extension of elbows, shoulders, hips, knees at the beginning and end of each repetition. Uh, at least head must contact, make a contact on the mat. At the bottom, of course, if you want to use an mat, it's all fine, but make sure that um, when you calculate the height of your deficit, you calculate it from the mat and not from the ground. And you must return to full extension. Of course, feet must be within the box. So your box will be sitting like um, with the, the width of your plates. So if, well, actually it will be hard to like um, and get over that width, but make sure you keep your feet together and bus, both heels must stay in contact with the, with the wall. If you come, if like your heels are coming off, you can come, uh, come coming back down to the wall and to reach your, um, to reach your full rep. So if they come off, put it back and then finish your rep and that's all good. If you're like pushing and then falling down, this is no rep, of course. And strict muscle ups, same kind of, um, standards that the strict muscle ups, there is no keeping, there is no butterfly, there are no movement from the hips or from the feet. So make sure you reach a full extension at the bottom, chin clearly over the pull-up bar and then come back in full extension. And that pretty much for the strict workout, the strict skills. Any question about I've seen some, I think. Yeah, we've got some questions. Um, one is on equipment. So I can't remember if the in the regulations we said people had to use the same little equipment, but the question is uh, if they can use different height pull-up bars. Um, I'm okay with that. As and long as it stands on the camera because we want to see. Okay, as long as you're in the camera and that's... <laughs> Uh, and then this is a standard question about knee lockout, knee lockout on the strict ring muscle ups. Do they have to have the knees locked on the muscle ups? Actually, we want to see legs straight. So we want to, we don't want to see any movement from the knees that will create momentum. So keep your legs straight. If you can like clearly lock them out, just keep them straight and it's all fine. All right, I think that's it for questions on that one. And uh, for the pull-up bar, if you, can't have, if you can't have two pull-up bar different height, of course, uh, your team member can help you out. Uh, instead of jumping, your, your partner can help you out to reach the pull-up bar. That's it's all good. You can have a sentence. Um, and then question on 
Uh, some more questions on whether they're allowed to use different height rings and handstand push-up stations or all athletes at the same station. Well, actually we want to see you on screen. So if you have like, if you can't, if, if you wanted like two heights of rings and they are on the same screen on the video, that's fine. But you have to make sure that you don't touch the ring before your athlete's feet are on the ground because this is a kind of false start. So make sure you're, you wait, your athlete is coming down before jumping on the, the rings. Um, the same for the instant push-up. If you want to do like two stack of plates, you can do it, but make sure it's on the same uh, on the same screen, and it's the same thing. Make sure your athlete has completely kicked down before kicking up. Uh, one more question on handstand push-ups: uh, keeping the feet inside the box. Yeah, uh, I have so a stack of plate. Oh yeah, you haven't shown it because it's the same as the individuals were this week, right? Yeah. So I'm going to share my, I'm not sure that plates are, it's not the great height. So I'm going to show you there. So it's a little wider than the normal box. Yeah. So it's one plate, one hammer and another set of plate. So this is your box and when you come down, so I don't want to see that. So just keep your feet together, come back, and then press out. I think the the maximum width we measured it last time for the individuals it was 121 centimeters, right, Veronique? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so 121 centimeters is your max distance for those plates if you're not putting an ab mat between your head because um, that's the standard width of plate um, at plate. So no wider than 121 um, if you're setting it up without an mat. I think that's all the questions I see, Veronique. So if you want to move to... I didn't see the handstand push-up. Can you do it again? <laughs> and you guys can ignore the... We just said you're fine to use other multiple sets of equipment. So you can ignore the last line on that yeah. test regulations thing. Sorry, go ahead, Veronique. <laughs> so mixed relay one is your test four. It's uh, performed by one male and one female pair. It's on an eight minute clock. So athlete number one will be on a one minute double unders. And athlete number two will be in a one minute power snatches and every minute athletes will switch arm wrap and go for another one minute. So actually each athlete will perform eight minute arm wrap, but you will switch each minute uh, what movement you will be performed. So the score is total rep accumulated by both athletes on both movements. Any question about this one? So athletes start at double unders, athletes number one, athletes number two is at power snatches. They perform for one minute and then switch. So athletes two get to the double unders, athlete one to the power snatches, perform for one minute and then come back and then switch like that for the whole five, uh, eight minutes. So the snatches are at 30 kilos, so 65 pounds. Any question about the flow of this workout? No? Yes, please. Can we use either uh, 35 or 45 bar? Uh, yeah, it's your choice for that. You can use at 35 pounds or 45 pounds. So 20 kilos or 15 kilos barbell. Just make sure you load it to the right total weight. <laughs> yep. So double unders, um, so regular double unders, my rope must pin forward. And obviously the rope must pass twice 
under the feet in one jump to count as a double unders. So TOs, make sure. Sometimes athletes are using like single under at the beginning of their sets. Make sure you don't count them. It's always when the rope spin twice. And for the power snatches, marble start on the ground, getting in an overhead position in one fluid mo uh, motion without, without going into a bottom of the squat position. At the top of the repetition is the same vertical alignment. So it's elbows lock, um, arms at the same level as the ears, and with hips open, knocks fully open. Those are lightweight for you guys. I know you're gonna go fast. So TOs make sure when the athletes are moving, they're completing their reps before going down the barbell. So what we see usually is like this. Those are not hips open. Bring it in the front and then you can continue on your barbell cycling. Any question about power snatch or the unders? I don't see any questions, so I think you're good. Great, because mixed relay two, it's the same workout with the two other athletes. So it's double unders and power snatches. It's an eight minute, athlete one on the double unders, athlete two on the power snatches, and then they switch each minute for the total eight. But the power snatches are a little bit heavier for this one. So it is the same standards for double unders and power snatches. It's only the weight of the barbell that has changed. Any question of mix relate to? It's the same slide. I don't see anything. So I think you're good to go on to the last Team one. strategy, test six. Actually, it looks a little bit like test one. Instead, it will be a full sprint of 500 meters on this one. The order has changed for test six. So it's female one, female two. But it has to, see the, it has to be the same female one as this one. So if I was a, a female one, I would start this one um, on test six. So female one, female two, male one, male two, each will row 500 meters. It's a 2000 meter row. So we will use a 2000 meter countdown for this one also and the switch at each 500 meters. Any question about? Uh, no, not 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 standards questions. <laughs> Any other questions? I have I have a question concerning the strength test. Can I say it now? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go Can the, uh, yes, please. Can the two male athletes help the, the, the female pair in changing the bar in the air? Uh, no, it's only two athletes working at the same time. So when uh, athletes are performing, guys are waiting. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, 500 meters per athlete on the last one, because there's only 2,000 meters yep. total. For the, for the six, for six. Yes. So TOs, make sure you look at those overhead squats, the strength event, the test three skills will be probably the most difficult one. But the good thing is you only need one TO for all of that for each workout. Actually, I think this four, you will need two, one for the double unders and one for the power snatches. For four tests, four and five, we'll need yeah, four and five. You'll need two TOs, one for the rope and one for the barbell. And the um, four other tests, 
can be made by one TO. So make sure the audio are straight and strict on those standards. Um, actually, we're working on for to be on the Olympics in 2028. So we have to make sure that we judge and upshape as we as the other officials in other sports. So take it seriously, guys. I know it's your friends or your wife, boyfriend, or something clear, <laughs> something near from you, but well, they are athletes performing when they are performing, they are not your friends. Any other things? You don't see any other questions. I think so. Awesome. All right, um, Anders, did you have anything you wanted to say? I, I kind of did your little spiel as best I could in the beginning. I think I remembered most things. Uh, told people not, not to film in portrait mode, and I think we got. Can we have a vote? Can we have a vote? What what what's this? Is this portrait or landscape? Portrait. Yay! Do we film portraits? No, we film landscape. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no scorecards, please. Just the scores. I don't need scorecards. I don't care about scorecards. I can't read your scorecards. I just want the we want you to write stuff in the email. Thank you. Um, yeah. What else? No photographers on the field. Nobody in the way. 4K um, videos. Anders is going to no, send you. I already bugged Norway about that. I can do it again, but you know, I'll, I'll, no, I don't <laughs> have. To. They know what to do. What not to do. Um, uh, did we talk about the Wii timer? Yeah. Yes, I mentioned it. You did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, thanks, Anders. <laughs> uh, 8K Mo, yeah, do that. Please do 8K and send me that. I will personally deliver a little bomb at your doorstep. Um, yeah, the Wii timer would be nice, especially for because you guys do, if the athletes do a lot of rowing, or the individuals, then the teams do a lot of rowing. So it would be much more fun if we could actually see how far you got um on that one but it's gonna be a good i don't think yeah if you all said all that i'm sorry i actually missed the time i thought it was at 7 p.m so i was i was having dinner with my family sorry <laughs> but um yeah. that's it hey Carmen. Yeah, hey fireman <laughs> um all yeah. right i think that's it guys we'll have videos i don't think i said this but we have like the the videos coming out soon. I mean, they're more for kind of just showing the flow and the demo and everything. The actual standards are on the website now with all the tests, but we will have videos out just for so you guys can see. Um, and we will see you guys Saturday. Oh, I did not say so just so you guys are aware you guys are competing Saturday. We're not broadcasting everything till the 22nd, which is Tuesday, right? So Tuesday, the 22nd, we're going to do a big show of everything and we'll keep it on time this time. Uh, that's the plan. Yeah, you still need to send, you still need to send still, scores yeah. 15 minutes after and videos straight after. So I need to get them straight after you've done your workout. You did find the, uh, this weekend with the uh, videos and scores. That was, that was awesome. Um, and, and most people that had issues with uploading, they just they, uh, emailed me and that was fine. Um, so so keep, do that again, please. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Good luck, guys. Have fun. Yeah. Let us I know if anything. Yes. No, I just want to say a shout out, Anders, man. I didn't realize you did all that by yourself, but great job, dude. I mean, <laughs> with what resources you had, you sacrificed a lot of you. It sounds with some time with your family. So, bro, man, thanks a lot for what you did. It was amazing. Um, and like I said, I didn't know it was all you, but good job, brother. Thanks, buddy. You did awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thanks. Bye.